Destination restoration. Destination restoration. Destination restoration. Destination restoration. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode. Uh, okay, so I'm just getting back home. I was actually at LCA tonight, um, and this was a very, very uh, man. This is a very tough game. Um, so let's just get into it, man. First of all, first things first. Um, the atmosphere at LCA was incredible, man. I can't remember the last time that there was that much excitement and electricity for a home opener, right? Um, new energy, new coach, new GM, new roster, new mentality, right? I actually talked about it too in my last video. In my last video, I actually predicted a Pistons win and I was wrong, but I shouldn't have been because the Pistons had this game in the bag. So let's get into it. The Pistons lost tonight to the Indiana Pacers 115 to 109. Before we get to play by player, let's do let's do our recap per usual, right? So initial thoughts, right? The Pistons came out the gate strong. They went up 12 to 4 in the first quarter, made Indiana call a timeout. The offense was humming, players were moving with intention. There was player movement, ball movement. Um, guys were cutting hard, guys were setting tough screens. Everybody looked like they were playing for each other. Sound basketball, right? And it looked very, very good. The defense also looked good early. Um, this was a low scoring affair in the first half. Wasn't a lot of points being scored. And that's what I like to see. You know, there were some fans behind me who were saying, hey, we, you know, K's only got six, seven points in the second quarter. But look how many points Halley had. Halliburton had, I think, two points in the first half going into the second half. So it was just one of those kind of games. And I like it because that's Detroit mentality. That's how Detroit Pistons play basketball when they're winning. When they, when they are defending at a high level, that is Detroit Pistons basketball. And that's what the Pistons exhibited in that first half. Um, second half, different story. They actually controlled this game for most of the game. But in the third quarter, they really just went cold. They just could not get shots to fall. Miles Turner just got on the heater and just knocked down three or four threes consecutively. It was crazy. Um, and we just couldn't get anything to fall. We had some good looks, but we just couldn't get any shots to fall. And you can kind of get that feel when, you know, we had the lead, we had the game in our control, but towards the, at the end of the third, fourth quarter, you could sense Indiana kind of gaining momentum and they would begin to stretch that lead out. And once, when you're controlling a game for most of the game and you're leading for most of the game, and then the opposing team takes the lead, and it begins to stretch little by little. You can just feel the game kind of shifting in their direction. That's kind of what happened in the second half. Like I said, because we just the Pistons just couldn't get shots to fall. Um, they, they defended at a high level for most of the game. Uh, there were some defensive lapses that I would have liked to see cleaned up. It was game one in the season. So I'm not too, too concerned about that because the effort was there. So I think more so is now just about understanding where you're supposed to be defensively, um, understanding schemes, you know, understanding, you know, not ball watching, things like that, which will come with time. That's why we have JB Bickerstaff here to help these guys develop that defensive intensity, right? Um, but the Pistons definitely, in my opinion, should have won this game. But, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I talked about that in one of my previous videos. There's going to be games where the Pistons kind of give games away because we're still learning as a team how to win, right? These young guys, they haven't been around winning since they've been here. They haven't won that much and they haven't really had veterans on the team to really help them down the stretch of games to help them understand what they need to be doing, where they need to be, what type of mindset they need to be in, all those different things late in games. Situational basketball is what the Pistons have not really um, experienced a lot of and it's hard to win games like that when you haven't been in games like that. So having veterans like Tobias Harris, um, Malik Beasley, guys who have been you know deep playoff runs, that's gonna help the team long term I believe. Okay, so that's that for the uh, recap. Let's get into player by player. We're just going to kind of go through each player here um, and just kind of go through how they went. Let's start with Cade. So Cade finished with 28 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds, a steal, 2 turnovers, on um, 43% shooting, 33% from 3. 6 for 6 from the free throw line. So Kay had a really good game. He had a very quiet first half. It looked like he was just kind of letting the game come to him and trying to get his guys involved offensively and more importantly, defending. He was defending at a high level. He was moving his feet. Um, he was he was active. He was communicating, right? Letting guys know when switches were coming, things like that. He was very, very active. And I could tell Kate won this game tonight. Kay wanted this game tonight, man. You could see it from the initial tip. The first two buckets of this game came from Tim Hardaway Jr. off two threes. He hit two back-to-back -back threes to open the game. And the first three he knocked down was assisted, I believe, off Kay Cunningham. And as soon as it dropped, you could just see Kay just bark at him in a good way. Like, let's go. And put their foot on the gas and put their foot on the Pacers' neck 
and put this game away early. They want to do it for themselves. They want to do it for the fans. They want to change the narrative. They wanted to come out with a clean slate and to get a win. And they and they did that for most of the game. It was just laid down the stretch. But Kate overall, K had a good game. He really, really wanted this game. I just, I really wish we could have got this game because it would have been really good for this team's momentum going forward. Would have been really good for momentum. But you know, it didn't work out that way. But it was not because of him. He played a really, really good game. Would have loved to see him get a win with this type of performance. But you know, there's always this game. Jaden Ivey played solid. He had a solid game. He didn't have a great game, but he had a solid game. 17 points, five rebounds, four assists, uh, one steal and a turnover. He only shot 38%, so he didn't shoot the ball well tonight. But there were a lot of fouls that they did not call for him tonight. He was good into the basket. He was getting downhill, and they were just not calling it. They just were not calling it. Um, and that's frustrating, but you got to play through it, right? But he did try to get others involved. He got other guys involved. He was active on the glass. Uh, the guards tonight overall was at, was crashing the boards defensively, grabbing defensive rebounds. And that it looks like that's going to be something that the Pistons do is rebound by committee. We have Jalen Duran, we understand that. He's he's a vacuum when it comes to rebounds, right? He, he just grabs everything under the rim. But you still need other guys to help because we don't have a big power forward in Tobias Harris. He's about 6'8", right? So he's not that big of a power forward. So you need your guards to crash the glass as well and your wings to crash the glass as well. And that's something Jaden did tonight. So he didn't have a great game, but he had a good enough game for us to win this game. Um, he shot 77% from the free throw line. So not bad, right? But overall, he played a pretty good game. Next up, we have Tim Hardaway Jr., who actually started tonight. I actually thought Malik Beasley was going to be starting tonight, but it actually was Tim Hardaway Jr., and he played pretty well. I got to say, he played he played pretty solid. He had 14 points on 44% four, shooting, um, had a rebound, had an assist, had a steal. Um, he shot four for seven for three, right? So pretty good game from Tim, right? There were some defensive lapses there, right? There were some shots that were kind of questionable, but he shot 44% overall, so I can't be mad at that. Tobias Harris... Had 13 points. I think they were all in the first half. He had 13 points on 6 for 13 shooting for 46%. Shot 1 of 6 from 3. It's not great. 16% um, shooting from 3. Not good. Uh, two rebounds, one assist, one block, two turnovers. You know, so he could have played. I think if he would have played better in that second half, it would have given us a better chance to win. Um, especially down the stretch when we just couldn't get any shots to fall. And when you're a young team, you need somebody to step up. Um, and get a bucket for you as a veteran sometimes. And I think that would have been great if he could have done that. Just didn't happen tonight. And I think that was the difference in the game. Not him per se, but just the fact that we couldn't get any shots to fall. And having a guy like him, which we brought him in for, to be able to get a bucket when we need it late in the game, would have been big. I think that would have been a difference in the game. Jalen Duran played great, in my opinion. Um, he had 13 points, 13 rebounds, 4 assists, um, 2 turnovers. He shot 4 for 4 from the field. And he shot... Five for six in the free throw line for 83 percent so jd was just he was just a dog man he was doing what he does right grabbing every rebound um protecting the paint he didn't have any blocks but he defended the paint well um he did pretty well on switches too guarding the perimeter which you know i don't like to see a ton of that from him but when he was out there he did a pretty pretty decent job guarding halliburton out there in the perimeter um guarding naismith out there in the perimeter he did solid so overall jd i have no complaints with him he didn't have a huge game but defensively, setting the tone defensively, and then just doing what he does offensively, you know, getting easy putbacks, getting offensive rebounds, creating up more opportunities, things like that. Solid game from JD. Malik Beasley, 14 points, 38% um, shooting. He started off pretty good, but kind of faded late. Um, he shot two for six from three, three rebounds, one assist. Wasn't a terrible game from Malik Beasley, but once again, everybody just seemed to go cold down the stretch. Isaiah Stewart, he didn't play a ton. He played 16, 17 minutes. He only had two points. But he's going to be a guy that does all the little things for this team. Isaiah Stewart was diving on the floor for, for rebounds. He was getting offensive rebounds. He was getting steals. He was getting deflections. He was blocking shots at the rim. He was doing a little bit of everything tonight. He's one of the only guys tonight who had a positive plus minus with five. Um, so it was good to see that. I think that's going to be his role this season. Just doing all the dirty work knocking down the occasional three, but just setting the tone defensively that it's going to be a physical, tough, smash mouth game. And whenever he's in the court, he's giving his all and he's doing everything that he needs to do to help this team win by doing the little things. So I'd love to see that from Stu. Fontecchio did not have a good game tonight at all. Um, zero points, one rebound, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks, one turnover. He shot 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 2 from 3. Just a donut of a game for him. Wasn't a good game. Um, he just looked out of sync. And I don't know what, what it was tonight, but he just could not get anything going. He didn't look like he was passive. 
he just couldn't get any shots to fall and I think once he didn't see any shots fall it kind of affected the rest of his game I think even the smallest contribution from him um would have helped this team get a win tonight and I'm not trying to blame him specifically it's just tough when you see a guy play so well in the preseason and then first game of the season they don't really give you anything he kind of hurt us tonight but it's game one of the regular season you know I'm not too concerned about that he showed up what he can do last year so I'm not concerned about that it's just a bummer that in the game where we needed scoring we couldn't get anything to fall Marcus Sasser didn't play much he only played three minutes um had two points they brought him in in the second quarter for some offense and he got a bucket, but he really didn't do too much. He didn't really get much playing time, but he did score on his only bucket. Ron Holland, guys. Man. Ron Holland. I love this kid, man. This is my first time seeing him up close. This dude, man, he's just a ball of energy. And he is going to be so impactful for this team. He's going to do a lot of the things that, like I mentioned with Isaiah Stewart, doing a lot of things that don't show up in the stat sheet but just brings energy to this team. Every time he was in the game, you could hear the appreciation from the crowd because he always gives max effort whenever he's in the court. He's always giving max effort. He's always playing hard and he always finds a way to make an impact. He has six points tonight, two for six. So he didn't shoot great. Um, he shot 0 for three from three, which is what we kind of expect right early on as he's continuing to learn to develop that three point shot. He had three rebounds, two steals in, in the turnover. So it wasn't a great, impactful game on the stat sheet but just his energy like i mentioned just his energy and his defensive intensity and just his he's a dog man he's a dog he got into it a few times he did get called for a technical foul it was six guys in the court and he just wouldn't get off the court because he was barking at, some, at one of the opposing players i can't remember who it was it may have been been a day matthew i'm not sure so that hurts a little bit you know so he got he's got to kind of watch that you know he's here for all the smoke for sure but he needs to understand when to be aggressive and when to push the envelope and when to pull back right so, but I am really, really excited about what he's going to bring to this team. You can just see it. You can just see that he's going to be a very impactful player. He's a very raw player right now, but even with him being so raw, he's still able to find a way to make an impact. Even if it's just giving the guys a jolt of energy to come on, let's go. Let's get into this game. And he did that tonight, right? Um, so overall, it was, it was a very uh, tough game. It's tough when you control the game the way you do and then you come up short right but that's the way it goes sometimes and i am still very hopeful and very optimistic about this team's um future going forward i feel like the guys in this team really embody pistons basketball what i remember pistons basketball to be when the pistons were playing well in in playoff contention so the pistons have some work to do um but this was an overall solid game shout out to everybody who was there tonight that came up and, and said something to me it was good to see all you guys and meet everybody um yeah it was good to just kind of chop it up with y'all i got a chance to see my guy king my guy randy and everybody else who was there tonight man hopefully the pistons can get a win in the next game next up for the pistons are the cleveland cavaliers they play them on the road this coming friday and i'm looking forward to that game hopefully jb bickerstaff can get some revenge some get back against his old team um, looking forward to that one. We did play well against them in the preseason, but this is a whole different ball game. So I'm looking forward to see if the Pistons, I want to see how they respond to this game. This was kind of a heartbreaking loss because of how it transpired, controlling the game early and then losing it late. So I want to see if they're able to bounce back and be able to get a win and not fall into a hole early, which I don't expect this team to do because this team has a different kind of feel, different kind of resiliency, different kind of resolve. So looking forward to the next game. If there's anything that you guys saw that I missed, uh, let me know down in the comments and let's talk about it. But other than that, appreciate you hanging with your boy. And as always, Detroit versus everybody. Peace. Like him, hate him, that boy is poison.